Sairam. It was sometime in the mid 1970s when Shri B D Jatti, along with his entourage, had come to the city of Bangalore, or the city of Bengaluru as it is known today. Shri B D Jatti at that time was the Vice President of India, and he was accompanied by Shri Devaraj Ars, who was then the Chief Minister of the State of Karnataka, of which Bangalore is the capital. along with several other high profile people and ministers from the central government's cabinet they had a very pressing national issue on which they were seeking bhagwan's advice of course unofficially because you know politically we may have different stances but in the heart everyone needs god the biggest of politicians the richest of businessmen the most influential and powerful of people without exception need god so they had come to brindavan but before they could meet swami swami had already retired for the day they were stopped at the gates by a certain gentleman whose name is ram brahmam shri ram brahmam stopped the entire entourage and said that they could not meet swami because swami had retired for the day they then told him that see this is not an ordinary delegation it has been empowered by the prime minister of the country and we urgently need to discuss with swami for 15 minutes kindly allow us to go in no way was shri ram brahmam going to allow them to go in then they requested him whether at least he could go in and tell swami about the situation and then they are ready to accept whatever swami decides he said sir swami knows everything so there is no need for me to go and tell him anything once he has retired he has retired and neither will you be going in nor will i be going in then what do you want us to do now return empty handed to the prime minister folding his hands and with all humility rama brahmam told them sir i would request you and your entire team to sit there in the darshan grounds and chant sai ram sai ram from the bottom of your heart the lord will respond to your prayer well rama brahmam is a legend he is a devotee par excellence an amazing servitor of bhagwan shri satya sai baba He was actually a very prosperous businessman and a devout follower of the Sai Baba of Shirdi. Since 1945 he had been a devotee of Shirdi Baba. It was only in 1953 that he had his first darshan of Bhagwan Shri Satya Sai Baba and he was 51 years of age at that time. So in the first darshan itself when he was sitting there it put a parthi Swami came to him and called him out Rama Brahmam and he wondered how on earth did this sai baba know my name but then in a matter of two days his experiences were phenomenal on the third day swami actually called him into the interview room and gave him a chance to do pada puja worshiping of his feet and as rama brahmam worshiped swami's feet he had the darshan of the feet of shirdi baba he had shirdi sai's darshan and he realized that the sai whom he loved from the bottom of his heart was seated right before him that was the great blessing that swami conferred on rama brahmam but the greater blessing was the implicit faith and obedience that shri rama brahmam possessed and that was because for him it was swami who was always the first priority prema swarupulara once rama brahmam came under swami's divine umbrella of protection and grace he began to prosper and do very well in every aspect of life he had a tobacco export business in which he flourished prospered and became extremely wealthy but then there came the testing times in his life like it comes in every devotee's life these testing times come in order to show the devotee what is important in life and what is not 
as a secondary benefit these times also present the devotee in a light so that he or she is inspiring for all the other fellow devotees and pilgrims on the path to god in 1955 rama brahman became very sick and for almost a year no doctor could diagnose what was wrong with him in 1956 one year later it was found that he had some severe trouble with his lungs interesting right a person in the tobacco export business you know which is possibly ruining hundreds of lungs himself suffers from problems of the lungs well not that i understand the working of karma very well but swami says if you sow a lemon seed you get a lemon fruit you sow an apple seed you get an apple fruit you cannot sow a lemon seed and get a mango fruit as we sow so shall we reap and that is why it is so important that we follow swami's words and be noble in all our thoughts words and deeds along with the health problems came financial problems for ram brahman his business went bust he had to sell off everything in order to pay off the debtors soon all his friends deserted him many members in his family also deserted him he was all alone but then he held on to swami and most importantly swami held on to him very firmly like a loving father and mother and therefore in 1963 when rama brahman wanted to perform his youngest daughter's wedding he did not have anybody else to turn to but to swami swami assured him that he would conduct the wedding and told him to come over and settle in brindavan at whitefield swami's bengaluru ashram and that is how rama brahman became the manager of brindavan swami made him the manager of that brindavan ashram as a manager he was reporting to the ultimate ceo in the world and universe bhagwan sri satyasai baba he had four principles that he always followed one he treated the entire ashram and the work that he had been allotted as his own work not as swami's work he didn't consider himself as an employee he felt this is my own that is the involvement and commitment that he put in second thing he never would ask for any personal favors or any personal prayers from swami because he felt that swami knows everything the third thing follow swami's advice and directions to the t every little bit without question without doubt and all these three were based on the fourth point which is swami is god don't ever forget that abc of life always be careful defg of life don't ever forget god it was based on these four principles that he did his entire work and that is why you know so many amazing experiences on one occasion swami just told rama brahmam that see your wife talks too much and she talks too loud in the mandir i am also getting disturbed what rama brahmam did that very day he traveled along with his wife to his hometown in vijayawada dropped her off at the village it was a 17 18 hour journey dropped her off there and came back the next day <laughs> and then after a few days swami inquired ram brahmam where is your wife swami she is back at the village when is she coming here i don't know swami again after a few days swami would ask when is your wife coming here i don't know swami when is your wife coming here i don't know swami finally swami said ram brahmam if within the next one week your wife is not here i will send you to where your wife is that was when he again immediately traveled that entire distance and in a matter of couple of days his wife was back at the brindavan ashram that is the kind of priority swami was given by rama brahmam swami's words are first swami's work is my work that's it that is all that is important nothing else matters in fact many years later when it was the wedding of his granddaughter rama brahmam gave the invitation card to swami swami accepted it read through it but did not tell anything to rama brahmam the number of days left for the wedding kept passing and soon the wedding was upon them but then rama brahmam was at brindavan and he did not go for the wedding on the day of the wedding swami asked rama brahmam why you did not go for your granddaughter's wedding he said swami i thought you did not want me to go because if you had wanted me to go you would have told me to go as simple as that swami was so impressed swami told everybody look this is the quality of a true devotee swami made rama brahmam as an ideal example for all the devotees to emulate 
Rama Brahmam had to go through another challenging situation when on the 3rd of June in 1964, his son Nagabhushan, second son, passed away. He died young. And this was told to Rama Brahmam by none other than Swami himself. Because at that time there was a cyclone and the weather was not fine in Andhra Pradesh and there was no communication possible between Vijayawada and Bangalore. So Swami told Rama Brahmam that this is what has happened to your son. Leave immediately to, with your wife to your hometown. But don't tell her about this till you reach the village. And that is how Rama Brahmam made this journey again with his wife back to his village 17 hours. And during the entire 17 hours, neither did he show the slightest sorrow nor did he give a hint also to his wife about the passing away of the son. He his was such a state of surrender that he felt if Swami has said this and Swami has done this, it is for the best, best of the son, best of the mother, best of me, best for me. And then when they reached the village, that is when the mother got to know that her son was no more. She saw the dead body, she couldn't, her heart broke, she couldn't control her tears, she wept and wept. And Ram Brahmam consoled her, telling that Swami knew this. And Swami saved you from suffering for the 17 hours when you travelled. And like a loving mother, He told me to tell this to you only after we reached the village. The next day, there was a letter for Ram Brahmam and his wife, written by Swami. Yes, that is another interesting thing, you know. Swami wrote so many letters to Ram Brahmam. In fact, when Swami had gone to East Africa, Swami had left behind Rama Brahmam to take care of the Brindavan Ashram. From there also he wrote a letter to Ram Brahmam telling that Ram Brahma, I can never forget you. Remember wherever you are, whether you are in the forest or in the hills or in the bottom of the ocean, wherever you are, your Sai will never leave you. Your Sai is always with you. That is the love Swami has for Rama Brahmam. So back then in 1964 also, this was the letter where Swami assured both Rama Brahmam and his wife, that your son Nagabhushan is with me, you don't worry. For a fortnight, the couple stayed in the village and completed all the final rites and formalities. And when they came back to Brindavan, the mother again broke down. She could not take it. It's not easy for the mother to take the loss of her child. She asked Swami, Swami, you said that my son is with you. Is he really with you? And then Swami looked at Rama Brahmam. He was calm, placid, collected, no tear, no sorrow, nothing, absolute devotee. Like how Hanuman was for Rama, possibly Rama Brahmam was like that for Swami. Swami then called the couple into the interview room and said, look there. And what did this couple see? The mother's jaw dropped in amazement for she saw sitting there calm and peaceful and lost in contemplation of Swami, her son Nagabhushan. The son's body which they had cremated almost a fortnight before, that son was there. And the couple was convinced, especially the mother was convinced that the son is indeed with Swami. Oh, there are many stories galore of Rama Brahmam and his devotion and commitment to Swami. Possibly we can make another video on that. But right now, I think let's get back to the situation where Rama Brahmam has told this delegation of the Vice President, the Chief Minister of Karnataka and many other central ministers to sit and do Namasmarana. <laughs> Is that not the advice that Hanuman would give anybody? Chant the name of Rama. This Hanuman too told the people to chant the name of Sai Rama and they sat there following his instructions and command. <laughs> Not a command actually, but they did it because they could feel that conviction, they could feel what he was saying. So they sat there chanting Om Shri Sai Ram, Sai Ram, Sai Ram, Sai Ram. When a devotee gives the word, the Lord ensures that it is not violated. Sure enough, within half an hour, the doors opened and out walked Swami. Swami came and told Rama Brahmam, What is it Rama Brahmam? What is it Brahmam? You have not allowed some people inside. Tell them to come in. Yes, Swami. And they were ushered in. We don't know what was discussed in that half an hour when all these high profile people were with Bhagwan. 
1970s the middle of them was tumultuous times in india and from the emergency to whatever political situation anything might have been discussed but this much is sure that in the hearts of all those members who were there it was firmly implanted that this is a lord whom we can turn to for succor and help any time in our life and that experience was made possible to them because of the devotion and faith of the legendary rama brahmam for rama brahmam swami always was first priority and therefore for swami rama brahmam was the first priority dear swami may we get inspired by the life and experiences of rama brahmam to make you the first priority in our life always thank you jai sai ram